recording. I'd like to make a little shout out to some of my dear friends that contacted me this week, Galena, Svetlana, and Anna, who are, I guess, struggling through things in the country there, and I won't say more about it. Um, the the uh, assignment for this week was to uh, report on any experiences you had in appreciating people. Does anybody want to, let me just go, let me just call roll here with the order of which people signed on. Uh, Matt, anything you want to share about this? Anything interesting happened with this? On mute. Unmute. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Always get you. Uh, during the past week while we were off, I, I wanted to show appreciation to this author. <laughs> and to Amazon, who delivered it to me in less than two days for a very inexpensive price for a hard copy, and which I read. Uh, during our week off because my mother turned me into a bookworm because she was a librarian and that's nice. what I do in the evenings instead of watching TV when I relax. And I just want to say for anybody who's watching this video later, uh, I think that's an excellent resource for really digging deep into this. It's engaging. It's lots of examples. And I really enjoyed it, Charlie. I, Good, so you. I want to appreciate you uh, for, for putting that out there for everybody to really really uh, get into this material, uh, whoever it resonates with. And I'm, I'm hard pressed to imagine who it wouldn't resonate with, but uh, that's, that's my appreciation. I've gotten lots of good reviews and I'm annoyed with Wiley because the version you got is one they, they print on demand now. And it doesn't have, it's a smaller font and a cheaper book uh, uh, than the original book and doesn't have the folding leaf and everything. But anyway, uh, I see. content's the same. So I did have to slip on the reading glasses late at night. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I, 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 I lost all the copies of the original book when the house burned down. So I asked them, oh. do they have any? And of course, you know, these days, you know what people are like. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, the book, the, the, the book's been one of the really rewarding things I've ever done. It's got an enormous amount of, it's in 10 languages. It's, uh, it's still oh. selling. I still get a, you don't make any money authoring books, so don't 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 ever go do it's a true. book for that. <laughs> it's but, true. It's um, true. It's it's still I, I still get royalty checks. I don't know uh, three or four thousand bucks a year from it. I, I'm not surprised. I mean, the stories certainly are set in a certain time, but but I think the messages are timeless. I, they they don't change. Human nature doesn't change. It's uh, it's all still accurate. I don't the I don't think I could write it again. I I don't have the the capacity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long does it take how long did it take you charlie to write it took a year so so what happened was uh uh this might be interesting uh, we, we 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 had this uh, online assessment tool running and the my sort of business partner at the time skip borst said i want to do an analysis and see what the effect of using the tool is and I, I developed a tool as a way to measure the efficacy of different processes was the idea. It's a longer story how this happened. Anyway, I said, no, I don't think it's a waste of, of time, money. We were all on a NASA contract where he'd get paid for doing the work he spent doing that. So he went ahead and did it anyway and showed this incredible result that the most powerful tool in our in our quiver was not the workshop. It was this online tool. We're changing behavior, an average of 4% improvement every time a team used it. And this blew my mind. Um, I, I never imagined this. Uh, and the reason, the, the thing that I learned to appreciate was that the reason it works is the power of repetition. You think about any, any thing you wanna learn to do to make a habit, repetition is how you get there. And it takes a median of 15 minutes to do it. So teams, I insisted teams, if I did a workshop, I made an agreement with them. They would do this at least for at least a year, once a quarter. So I looked at that and I said, this is such a valuable thing. This doesn't belong to me. So at that moment, all our intellectual property, which had been held under lock and key, was made available on our website, workshop slides, everything. And I sat down and started to write the book and uh, I think I had a first draft in about maybe six six months or so. So just FYI, the first thing you've got to so, so I 
I had a friend who recommended a uh, a consultant for me to write the the the, the, the proposal. So the thing you got to do with a book is you got to write a business a business case for it. And so that was the the hard part. What is the market going to be? And uh, and so I sent I sent out the uh, maybe more than you ever want to know about this, but I helped she helped me write the proposal and I sent it out to. Uh, about 10 people she recommended and she said uh, don't don't be disappointed if nobody picks up on it because you're a first time author and it's a it's a you know it's a, a a get well book or whatever you want to call it they're so common so, <clears throat> so I sent the thing off at noon went to lunch in Boulder I got back home and I had an A-list agent in New York City that wanted to take the book so so th she then uh, contacted several people and uh, Wiley was interested, and and I, I Richard Richard Naramore was the guy, and I told her I said I don't you don't need to talk to other people. I like Richard. I like working with Richard. We're going to do Richard, so we did. And so what happened next is you submit drafts by chapter by chapter, <clears throat> and, and Richard uh, got interested enough in the book that he spent his own time editing the book. And you get a, 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 a you get a special kind of a annoying editor that wants to correct the grammar, and the first person that uh, they got me, I said, I'm not working with her anymore. It's, it's a matter of style. I'm not going to write in her style. It's a copy editor, they're called. So he got me another copy editor who was very good, and I think we probably spent about four months go, going back and forth with uh, me providing a chapter and the copy editor and Richard providing comments back and me going, so about a year. And then uh, then you've got to get people to put things on the, the, the leaflets, those kind of things for them. And we had a big argument about the title. <clears throat> well, he wanted to call it the current title and I wanted to call it um, NASA team building is not rocket science. And uh, <laughs> So, um, uh, and, and the first cover they wanted to put on was a bunch of missiles. And I said, no, no, no. I said, the rockets, those look like rockets to you. My, my audience is going to recognize those are ICBMs. I'm not going to put my name on a book that's full of, of weapons. <laughs> so the compromise was <clears throat> I got my cover image, which was Hubble, and they got their name, which was how NASA builds teams. And so um, then I hired a, a a publicist that didn't do much good. Uh, I, spent, I don't know five or ten grand on that. But they they didn't do a lot. Uh, and I was sort of warned by Richard Naramore. They said, "I don't know whether you need to do this or not." Had, so uh, and then the, the 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 agent Doris was had had uh, insisted on keeping the. International sales sales rights herself, which Wiley doesn't ordinarily do, and so she did all the international sales. <laughs> and uh, I think the first country to pick it up was Japan. And uh, you could ride in the subway in downtown Tokyo and see advertisements from my book on the wall. <laughs> then Korea cool. was next, and uh, <clears throat> finally, uh, I think the ten languages now. Spain <laughs> picked it up. Uh, it's in Russian. Um, Anyway, so wow, that's what the story about the book is. And uh, people ask about a second edition, and I talked to Richard. He said <clears throat> you need a better business case for a second edition than a first edition. And uh, I, I thought I didn't have it, so that was that. Anyway, drink any appreciation stories you want to share? Uh, so did you do any? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so. In in my case, in my case, uh, lots of appreciation for the people I work with. So I have a management team, and it, like they do really a lot of work. So it's really very important for me to just take the time uh, and and just remember that I need to appreciate what they do. It doesn't come. Uh, I mean, it comes, it, it looks like it all comes naturally, but it actually takes a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. And it's always really interesting how people, um, how it touches, it touches them. Just simple words of me saying, 
what am I thankful for? What is it that they've done? And I mean, seemingly they've just done their job and they get paid for by somebody else, not by <clears> you. <throat> so that to me, that's always really interesting. Uh, but also um, what I know is the long-term impact of me giving appreciation to people. So every so often I receive an email from someone who I hired or promoted in the past who then remembers me at a very significant point in their lives. So either they get a child, they get a promotion, they got a new designation or degree, and then a little nice letter comes back to me just reinforcing mm -hmm me okay yes it is really important that i appreciate others nice thank, thank you. you marissa yes a couple things very quickly first to follow on a very nice appreciation note from matt um same thing um, um i had the honor and privilege to be uh to, to collaborate with you uh, charlie for last I don't know, 12, 13 years now. So, yeah. and every student and every mm -hmm. educator uh, received a copy of your book uh, in my program. So uh, we, we purchased a box of books a <laughs> long time ago. <clears throat> so so every time when educator or a student really um, completed the successfully the course, they received a copy of your book. So over all these years, mm -hmm. um, it's just really, it's the word spread really, I don't know, I don't want to exaggerate exponentially, but close to that because uh, I hear a lot of appreciation from my former students and from their parents and from uh, from teachers. So, and the second thing, um, appreciation uh, uh, to to my, my current students. Now I'm teaching at the United Nations School of Diplomacy and I honestly um, really touch to the bottom of my heart how much it really means to me to 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 build a relationship with all uh, my students they all fellows from all parts of the world they all come from different countries and different cultures so i am really enjoying it and i feel sometimes uh, that it's absolutely true and charlie you can probably relate to that that professors received as much if not even more from their own students uh, then, yeah. then just really, it's such sure. a, it's such a joy. So it's my 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 experience at least really confirming that. So, and it's such a joy to be appreciative of everything that you do yourselves. So it's just really great. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing. Uh, thank you for allowing me to share. And back to you, Charlie. Tanya, any, anything you want to report about experimenting with this? Yeah, I've got a couple things. Um, so. Uh, I did it right now. I'm working with a large leadership group and uh, because my team is a skeleton team and has been, um, I'm really reliant on others to help collaborate, to get the work done. And it is really interesting as a collective group, appreciation has worked tremendously well, mm -hmm. almost like a boomerang. Mm -hmm. So a, I yeah. will, I, I start our meetings because we have these project meetings uh, weekly and uh, always starting with the GLAD group emotions. I've used some of your material. They appreciate it a lot, um, but it's it's been really fun. And uh, the appreciation has been like a boomerang because when I meet then individually with others, I get it back to me, which is really kind of fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, so it's created a really positive work environment and people are really motivated to get their yeah. work done. I mean, it is... <clears throat> It's like a really high functioning group. So I don't know if it was always that way. Um, I'm just um, getting the the opportunity to work with them or if this has been uh, a, a great motivator. Um, individually though, what's interesting, and I, I think about Dorinka, what you said sometimes around the orange, oranges may tend to think, well, I'm just doing my job. <laughs> I appreciate me. I had that experience. Um, one of the leaders on this team He's been a great contributor and he he works in engineering and my team and his team have to work really closely together. Um, 
it kind of like on an individual level, it kind of just bounced off of him. I think he kind of didn't know what to do with it. So I, I interpret it as I've got some work to do on how I appreciate him a little bit more. Um, but I also kind of reflected, I was like, hmm, it may have also just been, I'm just doing my job. Why are you <laughs> so, me? so, so that was my experience this week. Um, I'm, I'm really using it out in the wild with this group and it's great, great. Uh, right now working really well. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Nico, did you experiment this week with it? It's not, not uh, before me. <clears throat> um, yeah, indeed, and I'm always aware of it. I always love to compare the American culture with South Africa. And in South Africa, if you appreciate too much, they don't trust you. You have to be very careful with appreciation for it to be, um, you know, with integrity or to be trusted. So you almost have to play it a bit down uh but that's why i love my exposure with the americans and i told you on the saturday call um for, for you larissa um, if i have to just think about one outstanding thing the last week uh, it was that uh, layout marketing person with a book on friday evening you know she spent with me from six o'clock till four in the morning online um okay so she's in seattle so she's nine hours uh, behind me but nevertheless it went into a friday evening etc and then the last last half an hour with the book going online she joined me you know she literally walked with me across the finishing line it was like congratulations and appreciation american style um and there's definitely a difference so uh, it, it, it is a, it's almost like a sensitizing exercise for me as well, you know, and how to make more of it in my own culture. It's easy for me. It's easy in the American culture. But um, yeah, the last statement, I've got to be careful here yeah, in order to be trusted, <laughs> if I can put it that way. Uh, in South Africa, when you get feedback after a lecture, it will be um, a lot of criticism and questions and so on. And then the last sentence or two will be appreciation. While I've noticed in America, lecturing and, you know, there's a conference, there's always lots of appreciation. And then, you know, the critical questions at the, at the end, just the small differences. Thank you. I need to tell you, I'm very skeptical about these claims of differences across cultures. Uh, my favorite example of this is I did a workshop in Germany and this guy came up and was gushing with appreciation for me and then finished his comment with, and we don't do this in Germany. I said, have you been listening to yourself for the past three minutes? <laughs> so so I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm skeptical that it's not more about our, our, our each of us than it is the, the culture being different. And that comes from doing this, you know, literally in the probably 20 different countries. And I hear the story all the time. And then in the end, I don't see it in the behavior. So just whatever that's worth, Nico. Uh, I don't think Americans are better at it, but that's my view. Don't, don't let the storyline limit your actions in doing this. That's, that's my point. Okay. That's why I want to bring actually... you to South Africa. <laughs> What's that? That's why I want to bring you to South Africa. Yeah, but I, you understand what but I'm it's, saying. I think it's more to yeah, you than South Africa. It's a, <laughs> it's a human thing. You just got to use it with discretion because of cultural differences. Let me put it that way. I'm saying I don't buy that. Okay. <laughs> do, do not let that storyline limit you in appreciating. Right. That's actually helpful to hear. Um, and I think my point with um, the gentleman in engineering, I do think there is like that kind of filter of like how you operate and what is home base for you. So kind of for somebody who may be orange like that, like it's really important to probably be pretty specific around like how he 
views and interprets the world and the work that he's doing, right? That genuine appreciation really needs to be genuine to yeah. how they probably experience uh, the world, yeah. whereas I'm a green, right? And if you're going to appreciate me genuinely, it's about the values that I have. So again, it's me right. being better <laughs> about appreciating it. Right. I, I, I think it has a lot to do with individual color and, yeah. and people much more than it does with nationality. That's my view, but whatever. That's super it's, helpful, Charlie. You know. Okay, thank you. Let's get on to some slides here. Um, <clears throat> this is interesting. Uh, th this guy, Dean Ornish, uh, John, you may be familiar with this guy's work. He's probably the foremost uh, practitioner of uh, this kind of medicine in the U.S. No other factor in medicine, not diet, not exercise, not genetics, not drugs, not surgery, has a greater positive impact on quality of life and reduction of disease than appreciation. So it's not just about performance, it's about health benefits. And I'm going to show you, I like to look at these things. Let me show you the flip side of this is, is the blamer, which is anchored in anger, and that's deadly. So I'm always looking for the other side of the, of the story as well. So <clears throat> my first client was an accounting firm. Uh, I, I was at the University of Colorado with a two-year appointment. It ended. I decided to take a early retirement and, uh, and stay in, in Colorado with no job. And the dean of the business school wanted me to stay. The faculty didn't. They didn't like me for various reasons. They had good cause not to like me, I think. Uh, I, I spoke truth they didn't want to hear, which is kind of my style. And he, he had a review of my course by the Dean's Advisory Council, which is CEOs of big companies chaired by the president of Pepsi. And during the break, three people came up to me and said, we want this in our company. And that was good news for me. So, <clears throat> so the, uh, a strikingly attractive young, young meaning 30s, I guess, I don't know, 40s, uh, Blonde lady was said, I, I run the, the I'm the area managing partner for Ernst and Young, and I need your help. The accounting industry and our office is broken. It's in complete collapse. Uh, the industry is downsizing. Uh, people, there are no more partner opportunities. No one's willing to work 80 hours a week hoping to be partner because they see us not in the cards. And we're just in classic financial failure. Everything's broken. Can you help me? I said, sure. So I said, so I do a workshop. So I started reflecting on this. And I had a friend who was also a prominent member of an accounting consulting firm. And I went and talked to him. He said, what you got to understand is that it's a different ball game than the university. With university, kids have got to come to class someplace. And if they come to a class where they actually think the teacher cares about them, you got about five points up to start with. In the case of an accounting firm, and you're going to be dealing with partners, and and these what what this means is they're going to be taking hours they could use for billable hours to sit in your classes. So I had a bit of a panic attack about this as I'm thinking about doing my my classes in this environment. So I put it off for about four months while I tried to optimize it, and it started with a lunchtime meeting uh, uh, to start the, the first day we had lunch together. And I realized I had a problem when the partners refused to look at me or talk to me. So uh, the workshop actually went fine. But uh, I want you to think about how to approach the use of appreciation in this kind of environment. What color is an accounting firm's culture? I would imagine orange. Wrong orange. Huh? Orange. On a scale of one to 10, how orange is it? 10. Nine or 10. 15. <laughs> so it looks yeah. like this. And the way this works is that when you pull out one dimension, you typically retract the other. So I knew that they needed appreciation, but I also knew I couldn't tell them this. So I gathered the, after the workshop, uh, Joe Marie is her name, said, I want you to continue to help me with the uh, culture in my office. So I organized a, a dozen of the partners and top management in a brainstorming exercise. At the time, I was using post-it notes. I've got a better method now. But it involves uh, just people writing on notes, and you organize them and prioritize them. And so I uh, 
I, I spent about 30 minutes with them with the question being posted on the wall very carefully. What do we most need in the Denver office of Ernst and Young? And uh, we did all the post-it notes and uh, got them all finished. And the answer was appreciation. Well, the five partners, the reason they hated me was they hated the area managing partner. They were all in their like late 50s, 60s, and they did not like working for a 40 year old bond woman. And, and by inference, me. So they said, you rigged the results. You, this, people don't want appreciation, you, you rigged it. So what, what do accountants do when they suspect someone rigged the results? They investigate. They, uh, they do an audit, right? Yep. <laughs> so I said, okay, the thousand post-it notes are on the floor. You're welcome to go sort them yourself, pick them up. Uh, and I'm gonna take everybody else out to Starbucks for coffee. So the guys in there, the six guys in their Brooks Brothers suits and Italian loafers got down on the floor, started picking up post-its and sorting them. And I took the other 20 people, went off for a cup of coffee and came back and they're looking really pissed off. And I said, what's the matter? I said, you're right, they want appreciation. So I said, of course I do that. So anyway, uh, so the, the, HR, the head of HR liked me a lot because I'd made her life easier. And so she and I <clears throat> sat down to make, how are we going to make appreciation a habit and in this orange culture? <clears throat> and the answer is you need an orange system. So uh, what we came up with was the idea of an appreciation form with three layers with NCR paper, which is kind of a carbon paper. And you would write there who you're appreciating, what you're appreciating them for, and who you are. So I got agreement that... Uh, one copy they would give to the person. And I said, the people who do this kind of work are often green people that show up and maybe flowing dresses and Birkenstocks and whatnot. And they're going to tell you nothing works except hand it to them and give them a hug. And I said, that's true in a green environment. But that's not true here. That If that works for you, I want you to do the appreciation that way. If that doesn't work, just hand them the thing and thank them and walk away. If that doesn't work, just stick it on their <clears throat> computer terminal when they're out to lunch. Do it whatever way works for you. Because one thing I've learned is that the social context <clears throat> is in charge. You've got to you've got to do something that works within the social context, or it'll be anybody's will kill it. The, the second copy you can keep for yourself, and the third copy you take it to personnel, and they'll put it in, in the. I, I, I misspoke. The, the second copy would go in your personnel folder, the third copy would go in their personnel folder. So we had a record of who's doing this. So about uh, uh, six weeks into this, I get a call from the HR lady and said, Charlie, uh, this, this has been incredible. Uh, the whole mood in the building is different. You can, when you walk in the door, it feels different walking in here. This is an incredible transition. <clears throat> that, that this appreciation is made. So I called my client, Joe Marie, and I said, Joe Marie, this is, looks like it's working pretty well. She said, yeah, it's working great. I said, would you like to tur turbocharge this process? She said, sure, how do I do that? I said, what I want, I know you have annual bonuses and I know in firms like yours, uh, the bonus is a big part of the annual compensation. It's a serious thing. It's not in the federal government, it's small, but here it's a big thing. I'd like you to agree to, since we have the records in HR, to tie as a 5% consideration in someone's bonus participation in the appreciation program by the number of post-its either in the person doing the appreciation or the person receiving the appreciation. So she said, sure, I'll do that. And they made an announcement. <clears throat> the, that office of Ernst & Young went from being the lowest financial performer west of the Mississippi to the highest financial performer within a year. Now, this is a big organization. Ernst & Young, I don't know, is 20 times the size of NASA, 50 times the size of NASA. And uh, so she was very happy and I, I went off and did other things, went to start consulting and for aerospace companies, didn't hear much from her. So when I, uh, when I, when I published the book, I put her in the foreword for she's the one who put me in business. She's the one that gave me that income, that first work piece. So I thanked her and I went and Googled on her when the book came out and found out that she'd retired and moved back to Boulder. So I had lunch, called her and had lunch. 
And she said, I want you to know that the work you did with me absolutely changed my life. And I don't normally tell people this, but she was a life habituated victim. So I helped her quit doing that. She said, not only did I get promoted to the top of Earth and Young and got moved to the headquarters in Minneapolis, I was appointed chair of the Kansas City Federal Reserve Board. Now in the US, there aren't many bigger jobs than chairing the US Federal Reserve Board. And she said, for example, when Alan Greenspan came to our meetings, he had to ask my permission to speak How about that. So the point is, it's not just about your health, which we talked about, it's about business results. And Tanya, that's what you were talking about, business results already. Comments or questions on this? Okay. So- Sorry, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, it's 11.30. Back it's time to, for a break. Back to what? It's time for a break. Oh, Where? thank um, you, 9.30, on your feet. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> on your feet. <laughs> Good to have an orange in the group. Ah, <laughs> oh, that felt good. Keep moving if you like. Up to you. Well, from a <laughs> South African perspective, I just want to appreciate Darinka for remembering. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, it is in your culture. <laughs> <laughs> so a friend of mine went up uh, to the World Trade Center uh, after 911, an uh, FBI agent, and I said, what'd you learn? He said, Many words were spoken into the ears of the dead that they yearned to have heard while they were alive. Many words were spoken into the ears of the dead that they yearned to have heard while they were alive. So begin habitual appreciation in your life for people you care about before it's too late. So this is a joke. <clears throat> uh, I like to make jokes about engineers. I think I can get away with it because I'm close enough to doing engineering work and work I've done. Engineer raised his hand in a workshop and said, Charlie, I don't need any of this. And I said, really? He said, uh, yes, no, wait, wait, this, this is just crazy stuff. This is no purpose. I said, how about your wife? He said, oh, I told her when I loved her and I let her know if anything changed. <laughs> Engineer's approach to appreciation. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Clients, uh, I tell them, you've got to integrate this into your work life. And so I ask them what they find works. And a lot of them report that they actually set aside a 10-minute time with the weekly staff meeting, open mic for appreciation. The number two guy in NASA, Rex Jebedin, is a good friend of mine, and he was in the workshop. And he said, what I do, I, 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 I fly a lot, and I don't like reading particularly. So I handwrite notes to NASA employees and contractors and send them when I get back. Think how powerful it is to get a handwritten note <clears throat> from the number two guy in, in NASA. By the way, he, he left, he's now CEO of a very big corporation that makes bazillions of dollars. Rex Jevin is his name. Celebrate team accomplishments. So my experience is that we, talk about team appreciation, but we don't actually do it. We, 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 we appreciate the individuals. So what I started to do was I, I had the, the newest employee coming into my division every year, got the assignment to go interview everybody in the place. It was, it's a small organization, maybe 30 people, and write down what people accomplished in the past year. And then she'd <clears throat> that <clears throat> bring it back to me uh, I would organize it into a view graph presentation and we'd have a pizza lunch and we'd look at the uh, accomplishments of the year. Everybody was astounded by this because this is how the, the human mind works. We tend to, I think, be managed by exception. We tend to take a, a problem and address it. And then the minute we get done, we go on to the next problem. 
But here's a secret. I have more awards and medals than, than anybody I know from my work at NASA. And, and here's here's how I did that. I took that same, I did this right before my annual performance appraisal. I did the same thing and I put it into a Word document that was about a six page document. And I, when I walked in from my review, I plopped this on my boss's desk and say, here's what my division did last year. And he'd read through it and he'd be awestruck. <clears throat> so <clears throat> celebrate team accomplishments. And when I work with uh, teams, uh, I would say, you've got to name somebody the four D czar. I don't know if being a czar is unpopular with what's going on in Russia these days, but uh, uh, a four D czar to keep people's mind on this. And they should check in with me once a week just to tell me what's going on because where attention goes, power flows. If you don't keep attention on this, it's not going to work. So an unfortunate reality, the forgetting curve. So it's a German research. He said, we forget more than 90% of what we learn within a week. Uh, this book, Brain Rules, a really nice read. We forget 90% of what we learn in a university class within 30 days. So here's the deal. Uh, people who do these workshops with me, these three-day workshops or four-day workshops, they walk out the door. They're, they're up at this point. They're all psyched. They're going to make this part of their life. But what happens is the, you have this forgetting curve, and it goes down. The remedy for this is repetition. <clears throat> so think about if I say six times seven, I think everyone here's brain will go 42. Maybe not in South Africa, Nico, but everybody else will go 42. And uh, why is that? Because we memorize the times tables. Sports teams practice. Uh, why They don't like practicing, but they have to. Musicians practice. And I watched an interview with Ed Sock Perlman, one of my favorite violinists. A young lady walked up to him and said, Mr. Perlman, I'd give anything to play the violin like you. And he said, would you practice seven hours a day? That's what I do. So you got to keep this re repeating. The uh, The online tool is the most effective way to do it. I, I, I the, the tool that I had stood up for many years was thousands and thousands of lines of code written over years and was expensive impossible to 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 fix because nobody knew all the coding and expensive to maintain and people used it didn't pay me as like they're supposed to so i put it down and galena in uh, novosibrsk built the tool for the world and problem solved until the ukraine war so uh hector is now building this but uh you need to find a way to refresh this in your mind uh somehow come back to this and we can do these weekly things probably as long as you want for this kind of thing but you've got to have the repetition or it's not going to work so i talked earlier about the the potency of this online tool so what it basically does it does this reset it takes you back up to where the workshop was uh, it doesn't take long but if you don't refresh it you're going to lose it so an elderly couple were having problems remembering and went to a doctor she said they're physically okay, but they might want to start writing things down. So they go back home and the guy gets up. His wife asks, where are you going? To the kitchen, he says. Will you get me a bowl of ice cream? Sure. Don't you, don't you need to write it down? She asks, no, I can remember it. Well, I like some strawberries on top too. You better write it down because you know you'll forget it. I like some whipped cream, so write it down. She retorts, irritated. He says, I can remember it. Ice cream with strawberries and whipped cream. I've got it, for goodness sakes. The old man returns from the kitchen, hands his wife a plate of bacon and eggs. She stares at the plate for a minute and then says, where's my toast? <laughs> so how do you habituate behavior? How do you measure behaviors in the presence of normalization of deviance? Let me take you back and remind you this, this term came from Diane Vaughn's book, The Challenger Launch Decision. And what she talked about was that the reason they launched Challenger when they should not have was not because the technical data were not understood or present. It's because under the force of the social context, they demanded ever more 
powerful evidence to uh, to to, to uh, delay a launch than to proceed. That's what she called the normalization of deviance. I think the metaphor is the frog in boiling water story that I know you're familiar with. So how do you measure behaviors in an environment where people's perception is going to be altered by this kind of phenomenon? So I didn't know how to do it. And early on, I was doing a, a workshop at Marshall Space Flight Center, and I was musing with the audience about this. And some guy raised his hand and said, I know how you do it. And I said, how do I do it? Because I didn't, I didn't know how, to, how I did it. He said, you measure against the standard. I said, oh, that's perfect. So what would the standard be for appreciation? It's this expression we talked about earlier, habitually. You install it in your personal bureaucracy, make it a habit so you don't even notice you're doing it authentically. And the way you do that is live in the mindset of gratitude. Then that mindset will get, make it the truth of your experience promptly, proportional to the contribution, and finally, specifically. So I had a client that uh, I, I did work shadowing sometimes. I would take a business client and I would kind of just follow them around for two days and just silently watch what's going on. And there was a guy that everybody that came in his office, they got a pat on the back and good job when they left. So I did a workshop for them later and I asked the group with him there, what's that like? And they said, we hate it. He was shocked. They hate it. I said, yeah, it's so rote. So it's gotta be specific. It's gotta have meaning to the person. So let's go back to the, we're gonna go back to our context shifting worksheet. And just to help things along, I, I made a version of this uh, that I'm filling out just to help us all stay current. And here, here's the one I sent you out this morning. You should have your own for this. This is part of the class. You should have your own. If you need a new blank one, I'll, I'll send, send you one. In fact, I'll, I'll send a new blank one out to everybody just so, uh, uh, and by the way, I've modified it a little bit since, but anyway, uh, we should be filling in, the, remember our, our uh, problem situation, others fail to acknowledge expertise and work collaboratively with me to address your interests. I, this is my version of this. You should have your own you're filling out. And we're now going to be in the place of uh, uh, who, who do you need to appreciate and for what? So I would now uh, ask the group, who do we need to appreciate uh, to, and write this on a, on a flip chart. And then I'd have you go to your worksheet and write down things that are pertinent to your, to what the, to your, yourself. So think about the, the situation. Let's go back to that slide again. And ask yourself, what, who needs to feel appreciated to move this situation? What is my, uh, this is our situation. Others fail to acknowledge my expertise and work collaboratively with me to address shared interests. So to move this situation to outcome, who needs, who do you need to appreciate and for what? Who wants to offer something here? Well, I think the people that you want to collaborate with uh, would probably be the first uh, obvious yeah, uh, choice. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And what, what could you appreciate them for, do you think? I think if you could find examples of where they you did collaborate, even on a small thing, uh, yeah. you could you could appreciate that and kind of enforce that behavior just, just by saying you, you appreciate it. How about could you appreciate them for wanting to engage you to help them? Yes. You know? That's been powerful. And I think um, just even appreciating their willingness to step into the space of discussion and to, to engage. Um, Good. I yeah. think for some people, that's really 
They are reluctant from whatever baggage maybe they've had in the past, mm -hmm. um, but that's gotten some people, um, the providers, the doctors that I work with, especially this is not their first go around with people bringing in new ideas and new products and changing things. Um, and they're tired. So yeah. <laughs> acknowledging their willingness and being grateful for their um, expertise and willing to engage has been powerful. Yeah, I'm good. Who, who else? You know, just build, building on Tanya. Sorry, I already gave an answer. But, no, no, uh, no, Tanya just is, made me is, think of this. Is brainstorming. Okay, me, uh, made me think of something else. It's okay. Okay, uh, it's almost the flip side of what she said. Is appreciating uh, the situation they've been through in the past. I mean, yeah. you know, not only that they're willing to step up and collaborate, but I understand why you're reluctant to because you know, and I appreciate that even given that you know, it's almost. You know, if I think it ties in real close with Tanya was saying, you know, sort of a, yeah. a understanding where they're coming from and, and appreciating they're still willing to try, you know. Good. Nico, you got something to offer here? By the way, I'm I'm gonna cold call on you guys, but you can just pass. Uh, well, I've got a lot of thinking about um, appreciation going on and the cultural differences like we discussed before. Don't, don't forget, we're looking <clears throat> for this particular situation for your context shifting worksheet. Mm. Who, who, well, for who, me, who, who can you appreciate to move this situation forward? Yeah, what? it's a... Uh, it's it's uh, there's a, there's a lot going through my <clears throat> through my mind in different situations, um, uh, but just the the awareness of you know being more focused on it, how to come across. Um, yeah. So, what um, would you write in your worksheet for this that you're going to do to help this move this situation forward? You can pass, Nico, if you want to think about it. Some yeah. More. No, the first in my mind, I've I've mentioned the one name, but I have a whole team, you know, who supported me with this book and getting it to where it is. Okay. So okay. I really, I really need, I really need to get back to them with appreciation, in good, all many ways, <laughs> or in a specific way, a special way. Good, good, Dorinka. I think you weren't here when we picked the situation, so but that's the one we picked. Yeah, well, in 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 my case, it's uh, I mean, I have a particular group of people, and I work with them, and and we our work really depends on them, and they've been really hard hit in the last two years with constant staffing change. Mm. Just like the the area, just like a train station. People just coming and going, coming and going, and we rely on them. So it is really, I mean, I know in a couple of situations, I found myself really annoyed by the entire situation. And then it was <laughs> uh, it, it was like an attempt for me to be a victim to say, well, I mean, how can I even do it when this is what they're doing and all that? And and. I know then next time I, I actually started by saying, look, I understand. It's like we've all been new to, to a place where we work and it's hard. Mm -hmm. So here it is. We would like to offer a 30 minute presentation and we'll deliver it twice. So it can fit everybody's schedule to tell you about us and what do we really need? And it was a it was a very interesting how the well it's a team call so it's hard to feel the atmosphere like it, as if you were in the real room. But it seemed to me that it did lighten the 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 mood in that because I can I can I really truly can appreciate that they have a lot. And then there I come with a barrage fire of wanting even more from them. Mm, mm -hmm. Good. Larissa, how about you? What could you write in your sure. context sure. Your worksheet for this situation? Sure. So um, I'm 
really grateful for the opportunity to work in science diplomacy. And I am really happy that um, I, I was your um, good student for many, many years because it really, <laughs> what I brought with me, uh, my, my backpack <laughs> that I brought with me to the science diplomacy included all these tools that you empowered me with. So um, it just really make, make, made me think about how I can use different approaches because I knew from the get-go that I will most likely run into people who don't feel or think like me, mm -hmm. who most likely would not even sometimes be on the same spectrum of sort of um, the directions of the, their thoughts. So I, I, I feel I came prepared. So I guess I'm, I'm back to my appreciation to you, Charlie, with really empowering me with, with my toolbox that I carry everywhere with me. And really, depending on the situation, I'm really taking one tool or another from that, from that toolbox. Um, but uh, really, um, genuinely being interested, even in the opposite opinion, that would help me. Um, and also what helps me is really encouraging criticism is not the right word. And I'm yet to really discover the correct word to describe what I'm trying to describe. So maybe, maybe it's feedback. Feedback. Yeah, exactly. So um, uh, and sometimes it's a borderline feedback uh, slash uh, criticism. But I, I just explain it to my team members that unless they will be open, uh, open with me and share it with me, I would not be able to, we would be making all together as a team, we will be making much faster and much more meaningful progress if they would be genuinely sharing with me their feedback. I encourage that. Well, I like the uh, plus delta approach. Absolutely. You know, yeah. What's, what, what's what? What am I doing that's working for you, and what can I do differently that would improve your experience? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So that's that. What works uh, for me, and I'm happy to report that it really helps me to establish um, different level of understanding and different level through the appreciation. It really. Um, I came to to the to to understanding on much depth deep level of what works Good. and what doesn't. Good. I just want to take everybody back to remind you one of the things we're doing in this workshop is learning how to do this process. And this is a situation we all agreed that we would mutually work on. And I want you to I want you to be able to when we get through to do this process by yourselves. Take some new some new thing that's vexing you and work through the same thing. And so when we get off here, I'd like you to, I'll send you an updated worksheet when we hang up, but uh, I'd like you to be working through this process and putting in this box about what you specifically are going to do to address this situation. And as I said earlier, if, if, if there's something else that you want to work on and it, it could be, you know, uh, any kind of relationship problem, you can certainly do the worksheet in a different way for yourself as we go through. You don't have to fill it out with this, but this is this is this is what we're going to publicly talk about this situation, and uh, and 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 this is the same way I do the workshops. Everybody clear on this? We're we're, we're doing two things together. We're we're learning the basic content, but we're also learning a process that I guarantee you will give you a different perspective uh, when we get through. So uh, please be filling out this worksheet as we go along, uh, just like, uh, so, so you learn how to do this also. A second task. Okay, good. Any more comments or go back to the slides? Okay, thank you. So back to my proposal team. Well, I think we're past this. Let me see. Yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten the wrong place. Okay. So let's, let's close out this uh, section.
Oh, yeah, I want to talk about this for a second. Uh, good. So, um, again, a lot of consultants who do this kind of work will say it doesn't work unless it's uh, personally done. So I began to think about whether email would work with this. So I did an experiment. I, I, I thought about 15 people or so who I had wanted to express appreciation to but hadn't because I wasn't uh, in contact with them regularly. Uh, four or five of these were friends of mine still back at NASA that I'm still kind of talking to occasionally. Uh, my next door neighbor here uh, who I appreciate and, and don't normally speak to them in the course of the day and even my children. So I, these 15 people or so, I, I, I wrote them all an email and I put something generic, like I pause to reflect on how you have risked my life. Your commitment to character is demonstrated by your behaviors. It's been inspiration for me. While I think about you often, I realize this is not enough. I need to express my appreciation. And, and partly what caused this was I had a, a, a client in Germany who I had done a lot of things for, uh, both when she came over here and... Uh, uh, took her around, paid for everything, uh, tra transportation, everything, went to Germany to visit with her, and she was kind of basically stingy. And I said, you know, I, when I got home, I just said to her, I said, I don't understand what happened here because I've expressed appreciation to you in, in so many ways and so generously, and it, I didn't see any kind of reciprocity at all. And what she said was, well, I felt so much in my heart for you. I thought I didn't have to do anything. So that's what helped spur this on. So then I put something very specific in here. And I said, like, the, for my next door neighbor, I appreciate the fact that you're such a fantastic neighbor. You're always there for us. You take care of things when we travel. Uh, you have a great sense of humor. I enjoy being with you and blah, blah, blah. Things that... So I sent this out to these 15 or so people, and the, the thing that I got back was uh, my extra neighbor said, I've never been appreciated like this by anybody in my whole life. My son said, you know, I've never uh, appreciated you for the, the, the great gift you gave me of modeling character. And friends at NASA said, you know, email me back and said, my God, thank you. I didn't have any idea about this. So I'm going to invite you to experiment with appreciation in this form. And I think this format works pretty well. This generic front end and write, write whatever works for you. And uh, I think for me, people's character is something I care enormously about. And uh, I started doing this in workshops and getting feedback the next day. And I got this, these things, everybody in the room crying. When people talked about uh, the, the people in their life that they appreciated, but had never done anything about. And things like uh, parents who'd saved and scrimped so their Chinese children go to university in the U.S. and so forth and so on. So experiment with this. Uh, bosses, colleagues, relatives. So we'll close out this section. Uh, pay attention to what you're grateful for. A lot, a lot of the work we're doing here, I'm kind of trying to jumpstart uh, I, I suggest you go, go on your computer and spend some time on this and, and write a one page of what you're grateful for and put it someplace where you can pay attention to it. Some people put it in on the wall in their office and talk about it when people come in. Some people put it in their desk drawer. They're more private. I think the best thing you can do is put it on your bedstand. And what's it like the last thing you do in the evening before you go to bed is to meditate on what you appreciate. I think it'll give you a good night's sleep. It's this simple. People need to feel appreciated by you. It's a basic core need. It's the foundation for everything else. So let me ask you, how do you respond to the Terminator? Not, not that Terminator, uh, this Terminator. The, the, the word is the same. So I think all around the world, even in South Africa, people are probably get up in the morning and brush their teeth as a matter of habit. What would it be like if you made daily appreciation just as much a habit as brushing your teeth?
And I think this is really powerful. Ask others whether they feel adequately appreciated by you. So particularly with my clients in China, they, they would often ask me, Charlie, do you feel uh, appreciated by me? Because as we, we, we've learned to habituate this inquiry. So here's what's powerful about this. If you're willing to be asking that question, it will help your attention and make sure you're doing it. So people often said that to me and the answer is always yes, because the fact that they're willing to think about that question means they're paying attention to it. So that closes appreciation. Thumbs up, how are we doing? Thank you, uh, Nico, I, I don't see you. Uh... Good, thank you all and uh, see you next week. Thank you, Charlie. Good save Thank you, week. Week. Thank you, Thank you all. Have a great, Thank you. Have a great Bye -bye. week. Bye. Enjoy the week. Bye.